We'll see it there. Charleston, South Carolina. That's where we find Fox Weather correspondent Robert Ray this morning. So conditions this morning, Robert, um, it, it, we've been flirting with seeing rain. It, it's, it's been less about the rain, I guess, the past two days and just more about the winds and, and how, the, uh, how the tide's been behaving. Yeah, Stephen, Marissa, everybody, good morning. Indeed, that's correct. Uh, we have not felt a drop of precipitation since we've been here. Uh, well, uh, we're looking at close to 48 hours at this point, but we have felt those persistent winds from the north uh, coming in, and that is sort of the issue here, pushing the Atlantic in between the barrier islands into the river system, into the Bay of Charleston, which is a peninsula. And by the way, I'll preface it with this, has been having flooding issues since the beginning of civilization should hear. Having said that, it is a huge challenge uh, to try and stop all that flooding, especially considering the fact that this is a pocket of the United States coastline that from time to time gets affected by hurricanes, tropical systems, and tidal floods, which is uh, what they are experiencing a little bit yesterday and could experience today as high tide is around the 10 a.m. hour. But we looked into some of the proposals that are going on here to shore up the seawall and help protect this magical historic city of Charleston. Up and down the Atlantic coast, storm surge pushed in from hurricanes and seas on the rise are major challenges, especially for the historic towns with significant international ports like Savannah, Georgia. Well, this port is the third largest port in the nation, and that's only behind New York and L.A., so, so that says a lot. And the port of Savannah is also the fastest growing in America. The river stretches for 40 miles from the Atlantic inland. You know, our job is to do hydrographic surveys every single month to be sure that there's no obstructions for these ships to come in and out. According to researchers, Savannah could see a foot of sea level rise by 2045 and a significant increase in tidal flood events to more than 100 annually. And when we're hit by a big storm, you know, there's some risk for that. And so the biggest challenge for us is to get out as quickly and as efficiently as possible. A two hour drive to the north, Charleston, South Carolina. Very historic place. This is where the Civil War started. Uh, back in the day, behind me is the harbor. That harbor has been there since the back to the 1600s when they first established Charlestown. But with that, they have a there. There's a high risk to coastal storms, specifically inundation. Proposed is a concrete fortress meant to keep the city from drowning in a hurricane. Among the highest-ranking projects for the Army Corps of Engineers. An eight mile sea wall stretching around Charleston's peninsula. The estimated cost around $1.1 billion. And if we go back and look at the, the Charleston Harbor tide gates, tide charts, the sea level rise has increased by a foot over the past hundred years. And that's that's known da data that we have that we used in our analysis. And from the and then we projected out 50 more years and we projected another foot and a half in 50 years. So we took that the historic sea level rise and the future sea level rise into account in our analysis. Though many people here, including elected officials, don't think the project is viable. And this project puts a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of resource towards storm surge to the exclusion of rising tides, rising seas, increased storm water coming out of the sky and issues that we've got with groundwater management. So I think it needs to be more integrated. And back here live in Charleston. Yeah, this uh, is a debated topic. It's been going on for a long time. Uh, there is shoring up of the seawall uh, already, uh, but the larger picture is more well, how do you say it? Complicated. Uh, there's a lot of money being discussed. There's a lot of opinions, but everybody could agree here uh, that there needs to be a solution. It's a very, I don't want to call it similar, but maybe on the same line of discussion as New Orleans, right? Uh, surrounded by water, uh, a city that needs to be protected, a port city, a place that is historic in America. And 
a region that is affected by not only uh, hurricanes, tropical storms, but also these tidal issues that, you know, like what we're going through today. So we're going to monitor uh, the roadways today. I don't anticipate anything major we're under that coastal advisory threat uh, throughout until noon. Uh, and uh, that's a minor threat at this point, but you just don't know. You don't mess with water. Uh, just like, uh, you know, you don't mess with a bad guy in an alley, right? Yeah. That's the uh, same concept. <laughs> that's that's true. Guys. But it's an important topic, an important story to share, Robert. I'm glad you did. I, I, even looking at what we dealt with with this most recent lunar high tide, King tide is not predicted until October. So perhaps we could have an even higher tide right. as we head into next month toward the next uh, full moon phase. And that's when the moon will be closest in proximity. And Stephen, let's hope uh, at that point, and we may see, we may see the Atlantic awaken, and hopefully that doesn't time up together, right? Yeah. Because if it does, well, that's a disaster. One, one thing to pay attention to. All right, Fox Weather correspondent Robert Ray for us in Charleston. Robert, appreciate it.